Hey guys, Crazy Postman here. So if you read the title, you know what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing, uh, review, and testing of the Electron 32 amp portable charger. Let's get to it. In this specific kit, when you order it, you get a Electron J1772 to Tesla charging adapter. We'll talk about this later. All right, let's get rid of that. This is the main thing we're going to be talking about today. The Electron portable electric car charger, 32 amp. This is the model with the uh, built-in NEMA 1450 plug, and it has a screen on it that shows some information. Let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, you can see it comes in a nice carrying case. It's black, has zippers all the way around. So opening up the carrying case, we got some instructions here. First impressions are, uh, it's got a good quality. The, the cables are thick and that gives the impression of uh, sturdiness, quality materials. So you can see here, we got the standard NEMA 1450 plug. Now, one thing to note, the ground is on top. And then you got a, a pretty good stretch of cable here that leads down to the main unit. That's uh, probably a foot and a half or two feet of cable just right there. And then down here on the main unit, you got your screen, your plus and minus buttons, and all your lights that display power connected charging and fault. So moving on to the connector here, it's basically the same shape as all the other standard adapters. This big cord goes into the end of it. It's got a little protection here on the end to keep a bending cord from hurting it. When you, when you hold it in your hand, it seems balanced and your thumb falls right where the button is. So ergonomically, it's good to hold for a lefty or a righty. The connector at the end does have a protective cover. It's made out of a rubbery material and you just pull that off and it gives you access to the J1772 connector there at the end. So my Tesla peeps are probably saying, well, that's not what plugs into our car. And that's where this adapter comes in. Here's what the Electron adapter looks like. And then if you compare it here to the Tesla adapter, they are identical. And that's what you want, obviously. <laughs> you want it to be identical to the Tesla one. So a regular Tesla owner could actually use this without the included adapter because we already have one that came with our car. But the reason why you want to get this kit with the extra adapter is so you can leave the one in your car and you don't have to worry about forgetting it when you go out. So you saw me do that. So to put this adapter on, all you do is just put it up to the connector and push until you hear it click. That click is just this connector going over the latch and then you can see it's on there. It's not gonna come off until you hit this button. And standing here, something I noticed just now, there is a little hole in this latch and I would imagine that so you can lock it onto your vehicle so you could get a little lock or something and put through there so anti-EV people can't maliciously unplug your car I don't know that that's what it's for but that's what I would use it for so another thing I'm noticing is this is pretty ruggedized it's got rubberized protectors around the edges that protect it from shock. So when you drop it, or if it hits the ground, it hits rubber, so it's not as much as a shock to the unit. So that's good. 
to be more ruggedized, especially if it's meant to be used outdoors. So comparing the kits together, this one's the Tesla, this is the Electron. You can see that the Electron is just a little bit bigger here. There you go. The Electron is a little bit bigger, and I think that has to do with the wiring size. The Electron had pretty good size wire. So when we open these up, wow, yeah, there is quite the difference in the wire size. I don't know if that comes across well on the video, but there is a giant difference in wire size here. However you want to look at it, if you want to think quality because they used a bigger gauge wire, or do you think cumbersome because they used a bigger gauge wire that that's on you so this is the difference between the Tesla connector and the electron 32 amp portable charger connector now of course using it with a Tesla you would remove this piece here and you would pop on this adapter so this is what it would look like if you were charging a Tesla but if you're not charging a Tesla, there you go. Now you're charging every other electric vehicle. So this one is more useful than the factory Tesla one, just because you can charge every kind of electric vehicle instead of just Tesla. So I haven't talked about price yet. And if you go on Amazon, you can get this Electron 32 amp portable charger bundle. They call it bundle because it comes with the Tesla J1772 adapter. It, it will charge all electric vehicles. Whether you have a Tesla or not, it might be a good idea to get this because you don't know. Maybe you have a friend that comes over that has a Tesla. Maybe your future car purchase will be a Tesla. It's just good to have a universal charger that can charge all electric cars no matter what. So if you go on Amazon right now, it's $369 for the bundle. You may be thinking, well, crazy postman, it's cheaper to go on the Tesla website and just get another Tesla one if you need a replacement. But let me show you. So if you want to get a Tesla one, you have to come over here and it's $275 for the connector bundle, but that's only a $115 connector. Then you have to go over here and add the $45 NEMA 1450 adapter. It's still a little bit cheaper, but then you still can't charge every electric vehicle. That is just for Teslas. Also, you can't get either of these things anyway because they are out of stock. There's a corded mobile connector that comes with the NEMA 1450 on the Tesla website, but it's more expensive at $400 and guess what? It's out of stock as well. If you need a replacement charger right now, you can't even get a Tesla branded one. So now it's time to go outside and do some testing. So the further we get into this review, my, my voice is just going downhill. You joined me here in my driveway. Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and see how well it works. Okay, I got the POV on now, so hopefully I can give you all a better view of what I'm doing here. So, <clears throat> you can see I have the Tesla high-powered wall connector. And normally I back into my spot and charge over there. But for this, I'm sorry about my voice, guys. It is bad today. So, how we're going to do this. So you take this, we're going to unplug the high powered wall connector and plug in this unit here. Now you can see as soon as I did that, I got a display here. This is what it looks like when it's plugged in and in standby. So that has a long enough cord that it's going to sit on the ground when my when it's plugged in here at my house. So this cord is 21 feet long. 
let's go ahead and see if it reaches back here to my Tesla. So it was long enough to reach back here. We're going to go ahead and pop her in. I plugged it in. I heard a click back there at the charger. And let's go in here and see what the car says. It should be charging at 32 amps, and that's exactly what it says there. 32 amps. So it is charging at the full power it's supposed to. 32 amps, and that is 8 kilowatts. Let's go back over here and look and see what options we have on this screen here now. It indicates that it is charging, and it shows how much power has gone into the car. It shows the current amperage and the temperature of the unit. So you can see here that it's charging at 32 amps. If you want to slow that down, 16, 32, 13, or 10 is what we can do. We're just gonna leave it at 32. And you can see I set it down in some mud. So we're gonna have to clean that off. Great. I guess you can see that. The sunlight's pretty harsh out here. So to take it out, what I do is I push the button and, and let go and then pull out. See? And then it takes it out with the charger still attached. If you hold the button down while you pull it out, it's going to leave the adapter in. Like that. So it looks like the best way to do this is to plug it in with the adapter already on the end into your Tesla. And pull it out in a way that the adapter comes out too. So I'm going to leave this here for about an hour. It says it's going to take an hour to get the car up to 90%. And I'll check back in with y'all and let you know if it gets there and how well the uh, charger performs. So it looks like the car has finished charging now. I walked over and the green light is not flashing. So let's go over here and check out what this says. So looking down here at the front of the unit, you can see... I have three solid lights now. Here on the screen, you can use it as like a mirror. I can see myself. But you can see that we've delivered 5.303 kilowatt hours, and it took 35 minutes. Now, just a side note, I'm sure everybody knows this, but the screen doesn't flash like that in real life. That's just an effect of the frame rate on my camera here. So thanks for watching my unboxing and review of the Electron 32 amp electric vehicle charger bundle. And it's the bundle because it comes with the Tesla adapter, which makes it truly useful because it can charge every kind of electric vehicle there is. Whether you got a Tesla or whether you have one that's J1772, you're all good. I appreciate y'all watching. Now just a few quick disclaimers, the link in the description is an Amazon Affiliates link. So if anybody's interested in one of these, I would be grateful if you use that link because I got a little bit of a kickback from Amazon. And Electron did send me this for free, but they did not stipulate anything. I didn't have to give it a positive review. This is exactly what I thought about it. I had no issues with it. I thought it worked great. I think having the little screen on the front is a benefit because it lets you know how much energy you pumped into your battery just by glancing at it. And I did uh, get a little mud on the back of this thing. Uh, I see here on the back it says it's IP67. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it off with the water hose and not worry about it because IP67. So thanks for watching this review and I will see y'all in the next one. Oh, and I apologize about my voice today. Man, it is just absolutely gone. I said I was going to do it, so here's me doing it. Cleaning that mud off the unit with a water hose.
just for grins let's go ahead and see if this thing still works after I sprayed it off and there you go it still works